Hello, this is Laura Medeiros with video number two. In reference to the September 15th Moreno Valley Animal Shelter City Council meeting. This video will discuss the at-risk and daily euthanasia list problem. The shelter had always, when I was rescuing dogs, had a daily list which we the rescuers could go to the shelter every morning and they would disclose which animals sadly were being put to sleep that day. We were given the opportunity to save those animals and a tremendous amount of animals were saved and found homes. This gave us a heads up that the animals were actually really going to be put to sleep that morning and we were given a certain time to be there at the shelter. One of the rescuers went to the press about a tremendous amount of pit bulls being on that euthanasia list. And at the same time, the director was upset that people were on Facebook collecting pledges for those dogs. And Another shelter also was doing the same thing and would give people a heads up in the evening and people were on Facebook really significantly promoting those animals and collecting pledges. Um, it just seems to be quite a coincidence that after these were revealed, these two items, suddenly the daily euthanasia list was taken away and has caused tremendous problems and unnecessary deaths for animals. Now, the way the shelter works is they want you to send what's called a pull request before 6 a.m. to a specific email that they have designated, which is rescue at moval, M-O-V-A-L dot O-R-G. This does not allow the public adopters to know that the animals are being put to sleep. And very sadly, this dog princess who is pictured here had a family coming to see her and they got there too late. Now the family had been emailing back and forth to the shelter. With the at-risk list that has now been promoted as being available to any networkers, rescuers, and cross posters is not the same as the daily euthanasia list used to be. The at-risk list does not include every animal who would have been on that daily euthanasia list, and it's only specific animals. The list is handed over to an administrator of one Facebook page and that is not the entire audience of the rescue community. The page, unfortunately, has blocked certain people due to comments, and those people can't see the list. There are also rescue groups who have decided not to use Facebook at all, but are still rescue partners of this shelter. And I know this because I'm in contact with them every single day and night on my Facebook page. So you are missing a huge part of the audience of rescuers and who could actually take these animals before they die. So it needs to be disclosed, not just the at-risk list, the entire list. Giving excuses for certain animals who might be there, who might blow parvo and different things, you still have to have respect for the animals and the owners to give that animal one last chance with your entire rescue partner audience. This is not being done. Had this been done, this animal right here would be alive today, as would thousands of other animals who people were networking through the evening with me and many, many, many other people who are pledging money, offering to foster animals from the public themselves who want these animals and can't get them because 
they're expecting that animal to be there in the morning and they're getting there and a lot of times the animals unfortunately are already dead by the time the shelter opens this is the only shelter that I know of who works in this manner other shelters do not now the other complaint was about the rescue partner agreement which the shelter director did not address he addressed the Hayden Act which has nothing to do with why the rescue groups are upset there is a section number 22 in the rescue partner agreement which is illegal which is why you have lost some of your audience for being able to save these animals it is a first amendment violation if you contact animal lawyers they will tell you that it is illegal so now you have a section if you don't sign the entire new agreement you are not allowed to be able to get any of the animals out of the moreno valley shelter any longer and people are offended by this this is how it reads section 22 online and social media the rescue group agrees that they and their representatives will refrain from negative comments or posts on any online or social media platforms regarding the city city staff volunteers board operations or animals regarding the animals who have parvo the shelter didn't even know until recently that the pet care center in los angeles with a phone number of 323-294-4030 has treatments which are really not that expensive and donations could certainly be accumulated quickly to actually save all of the dogs who came down with parvo in this shelter these rescue groups were not sent an email or any kind of correspondence and only one person is being used as the contact when the animals actually have parvo what you should do and the director is refusing to do it which I've been saying for over a year is you send out an email to all of your rescue group partners you give that list a couple of times a day if you have to that list should include animals being put to sleep that day animals who have medical issues that you know the shelter will not address because those dogs are behind closed doors and the shelter will not pay for testing broken legs diagnostic testing extra medicines such as mange kennel cough medicines which are only about fourteen dollars and all the other individual health issues that have been going on at this shelter for at least the last few years that this director has been there and i've been there every day working the floors these animals had broken legs that rescuers never knew about the animals sat there for two weeks and then they were killed anyway there were animals behind closed doors who had microchips and broken hips owners with microchips that the shelter didn't even realize that the animal needed medical care they only realized it when the rescue groups came after the pult 